We're here in central Idaho. This is the Salmon River, one of the major, probably the major river that drains the central portion of Idaho. Uh, I'm looking east here towards um, about eight miles up down the highway there's uh, the town of Chalice. This is Highway 75. And one of the more striking outcrops just to the north here, uh, and among a lot of striking outcrops and scenery is this kind of whitish gray, kind of chaotic looking jumble of rocks. Uh, and so I took a old road uh, on the other, on the north side of the river to uh, show you a little bit about these rocks. Um, and so we're gonna go up and look at these a little bit closer because I think they're interesting. I think it's a little bit different than some of the things you typically see. So let's go ahead and head up the hill and look at this pile of rocks here, which is again, chaotically kind of jumbled. You can see there's definitely layering in the rocks, but the layering goes in different directions. Uh, the rocks eroding out into kind of these flat slabs. And this looks like a good spot here. Um, and what we see when we get up here <coughs> is some of the layering in the rock. Uh, this, these are the beds. These are the original sedimentary beds of this fine-grained, um, I guess we could call it, you know, siltstone. Some might call it an argillite. Uh, basically kind of like a shale. It's fine-grained material, uh, all pretty regularly bedded. And then what's equally striking is that there's a running 90 degrees to that. So there's our, the layering in the rocks we can see there. You can see the different lines running through it. But then running nearly 90 degrees to it are these fracture surfaces. And this is controlling how the rock is breaking uh, at the surface. It's actually breaking along these surfaces to form these kind of shaly particles here and what this is what this has been mapped as is this is actually a slate so this is a unit called the ram's horn slate and it has kind of an interesting little story along with it i'm gonna hop over this way and get to a little bit bigger face here so this unit uh was originally mapped as an Ordovician unit. So maybe about, oh, 480 million years ago. Again, over here we can see a little more pronounced uh, bedding horizons. Some of them stained with a little bit of iron oxide, reddish, but you can see again, bedding horizons going this way, not quite horizontal, maybe slightly dipping to the Northwest. And then if you look at that perpendicular, you can see it just looks like pages in a book, all these thin sheets of rock. So again, the ram's horn slate, uh, thought to be Ordovician in age, but there's been some uh, new research done on this in the last decade or so uh, by some colleagues at Idaho State University, and they found in a borehole near, near here, um, a tuff, a layer of ash. Um, I believe it was just above this unit uh, that was around 600 million years old. And so by studying this rocks and the rocks above them, which are quartzites, uh, slightly metamorphosed sandstones, uh, this has been revised, or at least proposed to have been revised as a Proterozoic age unit about 600, 650 million years ago. And what these rocks relate to, the cool story they have, uh, I mean, superficially, you know, just fine-grained mud-sized particles being deposited. But the bigger story here is one of a continental breakup. So most people are familiar with the supercontinent Pangaea, which existed about 250 million years ago. And when it broke up, it formed the modern continents of today. Uh, but what you may or may not know is that there was a supercontinent that preceded that called Rodinia. And Rodinia broke up, I think it started around nine, 800 million years ago, and it lasted until about 600 or so million years ago. And these sediments here um, are some of the sediments that were deposited in a rift or in a, a, a basin as, North, as Western North America was being ripped away from some other continent. And we think that continent was maybe uh, Antarctica and Australia at the time. And so these are some of the rift basin sediments 
deposited as Rodinia was breaking up. Uh, again, some of these researchers at Idaho State have looked at the grains, the tiny little grains in this rock, and have found that the sediments that were shed off of, um, or the sediments that make up this rock, were shed off of the um, eastern North American area. There was an uplift there about 1 to 1.3 billion years ago, or years ago, called the Grenville orogeny. And so that uplifted highland um, became the source of sediment. So rivers and streams were draining across North America. Of course, the topography was very different at the time. And then feeding into this basin, uh, possibly a marine basin. I'm not sure if these have been determined if they're marine or not. Um, possibly they are, shallow marine basin as Western North America was being extended and other continents were starting to drift and break apart. Um, it's kind of, so it is a slate technically. Again, in some of the slabs down here, uh, you can see uh, the bedding, just the lines running across all the little slabs. It breaks into these sheets, so it's breaking prim primarily along this, this fractured surface here. So a slate's different than a shale in that it's been metamorphosed to some degree and it has a different, usually a different orientation in which it breaks. And that direction it breaks is what we sometimes call foliation. And so here again, we can see the, the foliation or the layering in the rock runs nearly vertical and more or less perpendicular to the beds uh, of the rock, which run horizontal there. So just a really impressive uh, outcrop, really kind of caught my eye as I was driving by today. Um, as you look up above, you can see it's folded in places. So you can see some of that layering kind of bending over. Other places it looks like maybe blocks have come down and it's a little more chaotic and jumbled. Um, but it looks up near the top there like where this overhang is, it's actually kind of rolling over and is folded a little bit. And probably a lot of the deformation here associated with the severe orogeny um, about 80 to 120 or so million years ago. A lot of these older rocks were compressed, folded, faulted, and that's a lot of the deformation you see in this region. So uh, the Ram's Horn Slate, uh, formerly Ordovician in age, 480-ish million years ago, but now believed to be about 600 to 650 million years ago. Right here uh, along the beautiful path of the Salmon River and Highway 75 in central Idaho.